Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to create a database launcher, which is a database that you can use to open other databases and other stuff too. Today's question comes from Jan in Aurora, Colorado, one of my gold members. Jan says, I've got two separate Microsoft Access databases that I have to work with. One contains my customers and the sales guys have to use it. The other includes mostly accounting information and my list of vendors and such. The issue is that sometimes the sales guys have to look at the vendor information and of course I have to use both databases. I don't want to merge these into one database as it's very complicated. Is there a way to just click a button and switch to the other database? Well, yes, Jan, what I would recommend in this case is to make a database launcher. It's kind of like a switchboard, but instead of opening forms, you're opening other database files. And you can also use it to open pretty much any other files you want, like Word documents or spreadsheets or any of that stuff. To do this, we're going to use the follow hyperlink command, which is a VBA command. So go watch the follow hyperlink video if you haven't seen it already. And while this is technically a developer level video because it does use some VBA, we literally only need one line of code. So go watch this. If you've never done any VBA programming before, it's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know. That one line of code is easy. It's knowing where to put it. That's the tough part. So go watch this. Well, I'm going to show you, but still, if you want to learn more about VBA, go watch this first. All right, so let's try to recreate what Jan's got going on here. I'm going to create a folder, a new folder. I'll call this my database folder. And this could be on your PC, it could be on your server, it could be wherever you have it that you can share it for the other users. Okay, so we're gonna open that up now. And I'll move my tech help database into here. Okay, so let's say that this is the customer database, customer DB, whatever you wanna call it. All right, let's open that up. And I'm just gonna visually change this so we know what's the customer database, right? We'll call this customers. We'll change the color a little bit. We'll make it purple, All right? You don't want to merge these into one database. I get it. You got some complicated databases. You know, you don't want to mess with things. It's working fine just the way it is. All right, there's our customer's database. Okay, now let's take another copy of the tech help. I'm going to copy another one in there, copy here. Let's make this the vendor database. Okay, I'm going to open that up. And these are standalone databases. They were, you don't want to change things. They work just fine, right? We'll make this guy the vendors. Okay, we'll make this one, I don't know, change of color. Make this one green. I think I did it reversed in the, in the screen caps, but that's okay. It doesn't matter, right? This make your, this your vendor list and so on. You get it, right? Make all your cosmetic changes that you need. This will, of course, open a whole different set of forms. I'm just replicating two different databases here. We got customers, we got vendors. Okay. Now we're going to make a third database. I'll copy it one more time. Bring it in here. Okay. This will be the launcher or the main database or your switchboard, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. Let's open that up. This will be the database you'll open first. Now, this guy doesn't really need anything in it. It doesn't need any tables. So we can delete those tables. All right. Goodbye. See ya. Yep. Okay. Bye bye. It doesn't need these queries. All right. Let's keep things simple. Get rid of stuff we don't need. Okay. I'm going to keep these because those are my template forms in case I decide I want to make more. But all we really need in here is that main menu form. So we can get rid of all of these forms. We can get rid of these reports. And I'll leave that macro since that's the macro that opens up the, the main menu form. And I'll leave that global module in case there's any code in there that I need. But now we got our main menu. Now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make the first button open the customer, right? Open customer database or whatever you want to call it. All right. Give it a good name over here if you want to. Name. All right, open customer button, whatever, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's go to its event. Now you can click on event here and it's got an on click event. Click on that. Now it's going to put you in a new spot here. Keep in mind that the old button, right, which is this guy here is no longer valid. When you change the name of an object, it's unlinked to its code. All right. So in fact, I want to get rid of all the rest of the stuff in here because it's pretty much we don't really need it. Keep status though, just in case. Okay, so here I am in the customer button click. This is going to happen when I click on that customer button. And it's literally one command. It's follow hyperlink. And then it's going to be the full path and name of the database file. Now, go back to your folder. 
All right, here's the database folder we created. Click right there, it'll give you the full path. Mine is C users Amakur. That's short for Amicron, I know. It's on my desktop and then it's database folder. Yours will be wherever you put it, right? It could be Z colon backslash database, back, whatever, all right? So you'll need this and then the name of your database. So it's customer-db.accdb, all right? Got that? All right, throw it in the notepad if you have to. But right in here, in quotes, we're gonna put that full path slash customer db.accdb. That's it, there's your one line of code, that's all you need. Okay, save it, close it, close it, open it back up again, I got a button right here which basically runs that macro that opens up the main menu, okay? Click on open customer database, and boom, there's your customer database. And they can get to working on that. Real easy, right? When you're done, you just close it and you're back at your main menu. Let's do the other one. Let's let's put the vendor button in here now. All right. So this guy again, I'm going to change this to vendor button. All right. Right click on it. Build event. Same thing. I'm just going to copy and paste this guy. Right. Copy. Control C. Paste. And this is the vendor DB. Right. Let me double check. Vendor DB. Okay. So right here. Vendor DB. All right. Close it. We'll get rid of this button here too while we're at it. All right, close that, close it, open it up. And I didn't change the caption today. I always forget a step, All right? Open vendor database. All right, save it, close it, open it back up again and click. And there's your vendors. Easy enough, right? All right, close that. And there you go. That's how you make a, a launcher, a switchboard to have one database open another database. And if you want, you could put a password. Let's say that this, you're gonna give this front end to everybody. All right, you could put passwords on this stuff. You could password the whole database file if you want to by putting a password in that vendor database. And then you gotta type it in every time it opens it. Okay, or you could use the trick that I show in my security seminars to actually put a password in the button itself or create user logons or any of that stuff. All right, here's my video for setting up a database password. I'll put a link to this down below in the description under the video. Here's my simple security video where I show you how to secure these databases a little bit. And in the extended cut, I show you how to do that password box. And if you wanna learn a lot more about that follow hyperlink command, I cover it in detail in my developer 39 class. I use it a lot with like Word and Excel and other stuff too. Now, if you've been watching my videos for any time now, for the past uh, couple weeks at least, I've been Doing some stuff with ChatGPT, I'm very impressed with ChatGPT and its ability to generate code and instructions for how to do things, and especially in Microsoft Access, I'm worried about my job. No, I'm just kidding. It's ChatGPT is nowhere as fun as I am, but it does give some really cool instructions and tips on how to do certain things. Let me show you what happened when I asked it Jan's question. All right, so I basically put Jan's question word for word into ChatGPT and it says, Yes, you can create a simple solution using a form of the button that allows you to switch between two databases. And it gave me a bunch of instructions. It said the command button wizard will appear, choose miscellaneous and in the categories list and run app in the actions list. Okay. Problem is command button wizard miscellaneous does not have a run app command. <laughs> now there is a run application macro command, but that's a little bit different than what I'm doing. So as long as you know that, you're okay. And I actually told ChatGPT there is no run app option in the command button where it says, oh, apologies for the confusion. And then it went ahead to give you the exact same solution that I just gave you. Use the application dot follow hyperlink. You don't necessarily need application dot, that's, that's assumed with the follow hyperlink command. But it eventually got there. And I'm pretty sure that eventually ChatGPT is gonna learn all these things, especially if I keep telling it stuff like this, right? And um, yeah, so it's gonna be a great resource for getting information like this. And as soon as they come out with a, uh, a Max Headroom-like interface that gives you the it, it, it instructions, just, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> if you guys don't know who Max Headroom is, look it up on YouTube. <laughs> if you wanna learn more about this stuff in the extended cut for members, 
I'm going to show you how to make that an editable list of items instead of hard coding that follow hyperlink command into a button, which means you'd have to go into database design view to change it. I'll show you how you can make it an editable list. So even your users could click a button, open up a table or a form, type in a new item, change it, delete it, whatever. And it's just, it works during runtime. It's best to try to avoid making design time changes if possible. Then we'll see how to work with other file types. You want to launch a spreadsheet, a Word document, a folder, a HTML page, PDF, or whatever. Okay. The problem is follow hyperlink will give you a security warning if you try to open anything but an access database. So I will show you how to get around that in the extended cut for the members, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's lots of them, folks. There's hundreds of them. Gold members can download these databases. And that is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.